So I want to, I want to, all right, so now let's get into this. Diageo situation, right? So I want to talk about the relationship with Diageo. So this lawsuit that you brought against them, right? People might not know, but I think Pharrell was the actual first one to sue Diageo. And it was for unfair treatment. So you had a historic relationship with them 15 years, going back to Ciroc, Deleon. I never even heard of Ciroc until you started doing the commercials, blew it out the water. Then you had Deleon, and everything looked like it was on the up and up, owned by a black man and all that. So a lot of people was confused when the lawsuit came about. You shared some information with us when we came to your house that we wasn't aware of. So can you really talk about that? Because I think it's a very interesting case study for entrepreneurs to understand. Definitely. Um, the situation's in the courts now, so I'm going to share with y'all what I can. This is all public record. But basically, I was brought, I was called to have a meeting with Diageo, and they knew that I was kind of killing things in the culture, and they were trying to fix their diversity problem. And through that, a meeting was set up, and I told them, you know, I, I want to be an owner, that I have these ideas from promoting parties at Howard, just remembering that I will always get the door and never get the bar. And so I said, I have aspirations to have black-owned brands owned by black people behind the bar and a part of your organization. They're the biggest distributor of spirits in the world, biggest maker of spirits in the world. So we get a test project. I'm looking at their portfolio, and they say we could start something from scratch, but I'm looking at their portfolio, and I remember one night, I was having a, a great, great time with Ciroc. I had some Ciroc, it was made by grapes, and I remember, you know, having just such the greatest time. And so the light bulb went off in my head. I said, I don't want to wait and develop nothing. Let me show you what I could do with Ciroc. Let me show you what, how I could turn your revenue around. They were losing $40 million a year. And I went and turned it around and took it to 2.6 million cases from 40,000 cases. Okay? And so this is something that's never been done. Yeah, clap it up for that. So 15 years later, even though I had that success, I was always fighting for Ciroc not to be pigeonholed. Not to be pigeonholed as a black brand. Not to be pigeonholed as an urban brand. I already went through that. I went through that with Sean John. They put me in the urban section. I had to go and disrupt the fashion industry, pull up on Fashion Week, and show them what that black excellence swag is about. And that's what we did with Sean John. And so with Ciroc, it was the same thing, getting into the spirits industry. No matter what industry I went into, I always came up against this ceiling that they just wanted to keep me in the colored section. I would say for businesses, you have white only business just like you have white only bathrooms back in the days and you have black only business and so my fight is to always make sure that we could just do business i want to be treated equally like anybody else and so that's what the fight is about and it's not me just fighting for me i'm fighting for us because whatever bar i set y'all have to come behind me on that bar and i want to make sure that it's right so that's what the fight is about simply put and the last things to make it clear was with Deleon. I still own Deleon, okay? So with Deleon, I sent my people. Before you tell the story about that, just talk about the process of getting Deleon, right? Because it was you okay. moved yourself with Ciroc, and so now there's yeah. an opportunity to create something else. With a lot of, um, first of all, corporate America is made and built for white men. So when you're going into corporate America, usually your entryway is to help them with a diversity problem. But at the end of the day, you want to be able to open up doors. Sometimes you got to take that opportunity and get in. And so that's what I did with Ciroc. But I told them I don't, I don't work for nobody. Everything in my portfolio I own. So you guys have to know my ultimate dream is a tequila. But I was like, I really love tequila. And this was before the whole tequila craze. So it's like you make a deal. You make a deal like I'm going to advance this for you so then we could be good partners and you could give me what I want, which is my opportunity for me to own my brand and to be able to build generational wealth for my kids and my people. 
and I just need the same 24 hours as y'all giving everybody else in your portfolio. And I couldn't get that. I had to send my people down to Mexico. And this is just to tell you what the fight is about. They went down to Mexico, and when they got down there, they found out that there was zero agave planted for Deleon. So there was no plan for us to be successful. It was no equal treatment. The other brands, they had agave planted. They had no agave planted for me. And sometimes you have to go check even your partners to see what's really going on. And so when I saw that, I was like, nah, nah, I'm going to fight because it's bigger than me. It's, 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 it's about not just me, it's about we, it's about all of us. So I chose, I, chose my perfect, my, I chose my purpose over profit. And that's the whole Deleon situation. Yeah, you, you brought up distribution. Yeah, clap it up for that. You brought up distribution, and you come from the music world, and so distribution is a... Hold on, I need to say this. I need y'all to still support Deleon. <laughs> you know, we're going we gonna to win this. <laughs> Believe that. Still support Deleon, y'all. Still owned by a black man. It's owned still by a black owned man. Owned by a black man. Owned by a black man. You, you, you come from the music world where distribution means one thing. For some of the audience who may not be familiar, I'm sure they could consume spirits, but they don't really know what it means to have distribution inside of that space. What, what does that look like? Uh, when you're building a brand like Deleon and Tara. Yeah. Um, supply and distribution is everything. Whether you came from the streets, we all know that. We learned that at a very <laughs> young age. And so no matter how I market a product, if they just keep me in black neighborhoods through the distribution, I can never grow. I can never be as great as I could be or as great as we can be. You know what I'm saying? I had to go from me to we. And so when I started really looking at Every decision I was making, I was like, that this is something that I have to change. I can't just come and get this check and not be changing the way the ecosystem is. So if you want to have a successful brand, you have to have, number one is you have to have the supply to meet the demand, and then you have to have the distribution. And so if people control your supply and control your distribution, they control your future. And so that's what I'm fighting for right now.